The Jumper T20 is the latest of a series of radios from the company Jumper that, that seems to have been in hibernation for a while while Radio Master stole all the market share. Sis, why don't I own this? Why don't I own this? With popular releases, most recently the Boxer. But the T20 by Jumper attempts to do what Radio Master started, which was keep the side to side with the same as the more popular radios on the market, keep the full size gimbals the same as the most popular radios on the market, but shrink top to bottom and the front to back. But it does so even more so than the Boxer. So trying this for about half an hour on Sim, I was doing one of the latest track of the weeks and my best time on the Boxer was 58 seconds and my best time on this, I was struggling to get 90 seconds. Now that's not saying this is good or bad. This is saying that if you do want to try this, you need to allow yourself the proper time to adjust your muscle memory. So plan if you're doing sim to give it a good 10 hours or more. If you're flying in real life, give it a good 40, 50 packs. Everyone's different. That's how long it takes me to adjust. So you may be longer or shorter. Now, as you can see, it's very small. In fact, I, I don't have super large hands but I can grip this thing very easily by the face. There's this little plate that comes off in order for you to put little module bay adapter on there, but like I'm gonna lose this probably in like five seconds. Let's go ahead and put it back on there. Uh, you can see there are some little screws so that you could mount something back here, but it just looks a little awkward to do. The grips are okay, but I just don't find it as comfortable as the boxer but as you can see the boxer is a lot taller and is going to take up more room in the bag but what can you tell right off the bat this thing has my ghost module in the module bay right there but what is this thing it's just a giant heat sink for being able to turn your express lrs internal module up to like a thousand milliwatts but what are you going to do if you need to attach another module on here well we're going to cover all these things and more in this review now is it nicer to be able to have something even more compact yes it is does it do what the boxer started by giving you a monochromatic screen but this one gives you an even tinier screen which would use even less battery life this one comes with a battery bay that can hold up to 21 70 cells but i don't have any of those so i just used regular old 18650s in a battery holder that i had for it now supposedly you can bend the tabs on the battery holder that it comes with to be able to fit 18650s but i had a bunch of these laying around so i just used what i had instead of bending and breaking it has your usb c at the top it fits really nice in the hand and it has a nice little grip i mean right there that your fingers just rest on i think for a thumber this would possibly be a complete dream radio but for me as a hybrid pincher which means that i do rest my thumb on top but i put my index finger on the front to add some more stability this leaves me struggling on where to put my fingers on top you see i tend to rest my finger right here but if you look there's a tiny bit of room between this switch and this switch that it has to sit on and it just doesn't quite feel comfortable to me the other weird thing that they've done here is that they've gone with a different button layout now these three buttons are the same as every other edge and open tx radio the scroll wheel still works the same but the other buttons in order to select model are not there you see every radio since the beginning of time since this tyrannus up there has had a very similar button layout you have your system button over here your model button over here for changing models and then the four buttons on the left side and the scroll wheel so that any radio you pick up whether it's from 2014 to 2023 you automatically know what buttons to push every tutorial that you need to go look something up from 2013 all the way to today are the same layouts except for this one they decided to do a different layout <sighs> It comes with a sticker pack so that you can label these six buttons on the front, which is actually really cool because you can decide what they're gonna be. But I don't mind them deciding what they're gonna be for me and just having them labeled instead of me having to guess. Now I have to go do homework on how to get this working. I pushed all six of these buttons and none of them are the model menu. So there's some pros and cons of this. It feels exceptionally good. In fact, for a thumber, this might be the best out there. These gimbals are the RC out 
Alps gimbals, which supposedly are the same ones that they've, Futaba's been using for years. That's been one of the mainstays that Futaba users have been pointing at for so long, is that you just can't get control like this from any other manufacturer. And I have to agree that they are really, really great. In fact, the first couple of years that the RadioMaster TX16S was out, I was still using the Jumper T18S because I did like the RC Alps gimbals and I felt they were a little bit smoother. But nowadays uh, that you can get the AG01s, which one's better? I feel like I have a little more options for configuring the tension on here. And so I tend to like this slightly better, but these are just as smooth. In fact, maybe a little more buttery smooth. And so I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. So I would say that's a tie. You can drop the stick down on this by adding these LED gimbal spacers on the boxer, but you can't really do that here. And so I found these to be sitting a little bit, like I just wished it was longer. The stick throw was longer. It just, that's what she said. <laughs> <sighs> I couldn't get used to it. Now, part of what made the Boxer so, so good is that if you were a TX16S user, like pretty much every FPV pilot out there for the last couple of years, you could pick it up and your muscle memory would still be intact. And that's huge. I know from back in the day, anytime I would switch radio, you interrupt that muscle memory that you've been building for years and years. And I would know that every time I switched radios as a reviewer, as a tester, as somebody that just wanted a different look and feel for my flying, trying to get that A that we all do, I would already know. I'm gonna have to spend 40 to 50 packs or more adjusting my muscle memory over. And the boxer kind of spoiled us because the muscle memory stayed intact because the grip was so similar. Now this one does have a very similar side to side grip, but the stick height itself and where you place your fingers is just foreign to me. It has so many little buttons and I don't really know what any of them do or why I would need them. I only use three switches. So for me, I would be using this for arm, this for modes and one of these back ones for like turtle or something. It's kind of weird how they have four switches, but they're not all in a row. Like we're used to having them all in a row like this. And so there's just a lot to adjust, not just this hand holding, but the stick, but the switch positions. There's lots of these little momentary things. I, I, I don't know what you would use that for. So who is this for? If you're on Express LRS, and you don't need another module. Yes, there is an adapter bay in the back so that you can adapt things over. But by the time you do that, you're gonna add a little bit of bulk to this. I don't think that's gonna be the best way to go about it. A lot of people though are using only Express LRS. And so if you don't need another module, then this is perfectly great. The best thing about this though is the price. For the intro version without the fancy gimbal, it's only $109. And for the fancy gimbal one, I think it's $130 or $140, making it better priced than the Boxer. So if budget is on your mind and you needed to get something started, and that $30 bucks is the difference between being able to buy another frame or another flight controller when you're first getting started, then I could see a lot of people going with this and then deciding later if it really works for you long term. I think the difficulty I'm experiencing experiencing is just adjusting my own muscle memory. But if you're learning to fly and you don't have established muscle memory in any other system, then you're not going to encounter that. If you do want to switch though, and you are using a TX-16S or a Boxer or Zorro, or any other radio out there, then allow yourself the time to switch. Don't try to fly at 20 minutes. See that your times are slower. See that your freestyle power loops are a little sloppier and decide that it's not for you. You have to actually give it the amount of time to know. So I followed my own advice and went ahead and put about a dozen more hours on this thing. And I went back to do the race of the week in the FMV group. This time I did the reverse challenge, qualified with the boxer. And then I and actually competed with the jumper and by the actual rounds where it counted, I was able to match my times with the boxer. So you can get the right times. It just takes the magic ingredient for anything related to FPV stick time. Now, what am I gonna do moving forward? Because I do use the ghost module, I'm probably gonna keep with my boxer that I just created. And if you have limited space in your bag or you travel or you just use Express LRS, man, this is a special one, guys. So plan, budget, then decide if it's gonna be better. You know what, something that's even better for benchmarking is have a specific goal that you wanna solve. One thing I did notice is that I could hit full stick deflection on the gimbal throw that's on here. Even though the gimbal throw is nice and large, I could hit the stick edges. 
easier than I could on any other Radio Master Radio. And if that is a goal for you of wanting to do that better, then this might be a device that helps solve that problem. So when you do switch radios, when you do switch equipment, whether it's motors, whether it's prop, whether it's frames, whether it's anything, have a specific goal in mind that you want to solve, a specific problem that you want to fix, a specific thing that you want to improve, then you can use that as your benchmark on whether that is it or not, or whether you need to move on to something else. Thanks, guys.